You've lived a great life and done well for yourself. But what mark will you leave on the world? How will you inspire future generations? Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand have helped thousands of people answer exactly those questions. If you've ever wondered, what will be my legacy? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast. Now, here are your hosts, Stan and Katie Beth. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast with your hosts, Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. Today, we are excited to welcome to the show, Donald Cunningham. Donald, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Donald, to get started off, just tell our listeners a little bit about who you are and a little bit about what it is that you do. Okay, just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm actually uh, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, that's where I actually um, introduced to my wife of 28 years of next year, it would be. Um, I have nine kids, uh, three girls, six boys. Um, just recently located here in El Paso, Texas. Um, I've been a financial service consultant uh, going on six years. And so what I mainly do is I help and educate families and business owners how to save, grow, and protect their assets. You know, all in a nutshell. That's great. That was that was a great overview. Okay, so you talk a lot on your website about life insurance, and I know Stan will have questions and, and lots of comments on this as well. So you talk about life insurance and how that's one of the best ways to preserve and create generational wealth. Tell us just a little bit about what you mean by that and how you do that. Um, so simply, um, I, me born and, born and raised in St. Louis was never educated on simply just how money worked or even the importance of life insurance. And so at the age of 40, that's when I actually was educated on, on the uh, information. And so I just took it upon myself to actually create a business out of it, starting doing it business wise and just educating the masses. Uh, whoever I could get in contact with, uh, families, friends. Um, I started there, of course, uh, especially educating myself. And so I didn't realize that you can actually create wealth through using a tool life insurance. And, you know, when you think about life insurance coming up, I just thought life insurance as death insurance. But it's actually life insurance once you realize the importance of it. So my, my job is I just educate the families. Uh, individuals on not what life insurance is, but what life in, what what it does, and so and that's what I get across, and, and that's how I educate uh, the individuals that I come across, because uh, there's so many different unique ways uh, you can utilize life insurance as a tool. Uh, but we'll be here all night. Right, right. <laughs> well, no, I, I love that. I do think that outside of the financial planning world, um, life insurance as a way to to create and protect wealth is something that a lot of people just in the general public don't know about. And I know that that's yeah. something that Stan has done a lot with, too. So, Stan, what questions or comments do you have? Well, there's a lot. We, we could talk all day and all night about life insurance. So many, so many ways to use it. One of the ways that... Uh, I think life insurance is underutilized, and I want to hear you comment on this, is okay. as a way to protect against the risk of, of uh, losing assets by, by having to go to long-term care. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speak to that, speak to that for a minute. Okay. Um, from, from what I understand in, in my education on how uh, I use life insurance and I educate uh, the masses dealing with long-term care there's an alternative uh, because you can from my understanding long-term care insurance by itself it can be pretty expensive and so that's why one of the tools that i use and educate the masses on is something called living benefit and so that's like living benefit to me um, i believe that's a game changer <laughs> because on the services that i provide it comes with it absolutely at no additional cost and so that protects you if they get a critical, chronic, or terminal illness, they're able to accelerate their policy. Uh, they face a model policy. So this is, that by itself is pretty huge uh, just to have access to, you know, mm -hmm. for what if. 
if for what if happened, if something, you know, for the what if happened. So uh, that's a beautiful thing on having um, access to that. I believe that's so important, um, you know, to just have, just have access to it. I always tell people, um, I know everybody familiar with AFLAC. So I just use an F analogy and uh, living benefits is something like AFLAC, but on steroids, you know? So, and I, and I just, just share that with them and just, because it's like I said, I love what I do, man. Just educate them on something that they was never aware of. So that living, that living benefit means that if you, if you have a policy and nothing happens until you die, then the, the entire death benefit goes to your beneficiaries, right? But, but if, if you end up in a nursing home or have some critical care need, then you can start accelerating the death benefit while you're still living. And it Absolutely. just subtracts, subtracts from the death rate. Right. Right. Yes, Am sir. I understanding that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the long-term care risk for average Americans <clears throat> is, is probably the, the really, the really big unprotected risk, you know, because something like, something like 70% of all Americans that they say uh, are, are going to spend some time in a nursing home. And I don't know how much nursing homes cost in your part of the world, but, you know, what I hear, you know, I hear, you know, it ranges from five or six thousand dollars a month in, uh, you know, down in the south. But if you if you go further north, uh, you know, you go up to I'm, I'm, I hear, you know, I have friends of mine in New York that tell me that that a month in, a month in a nursing home out on Long Island might cost fifteen thousand dollars. You know, so yeah. family has to be pretty wealthy be able to pay for that out of cash flow yeah absolutely um i have a colleague of mine actually I, on saturday we just had a meeting and he um shared um his mom was in a nursing home for three years and because he had leaving benefit and he bought this uh policy back in the 80s if i'm not mistaken but he say it saved him seventy five thousand dollars because his mom was in the home yeah. Um, for three years and because he had that writer on his policy that was able to help him out uh, for you know taking care of his mom yeah. while she was in a nursing home for three yeah. years so it's a, it's a huge man it's a huge factor uh, so um, changing the subject here let me ask you do you, do you uh, I guess I want to ask you how you you know, you, you probably have the opportunity or if you, and maybe it's, maybe you think of it as an opportunity or not, but, but the, the opportunity to work with attorneys in the course of the work that you do with your clients. And I'm, 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 I'm wondering, uh, just share some experiences. Tell, tell me how that relationship works. Uh, you know, and, and I guess I, what I'm really looking for is to find out if you've had some negative experiences in working with attorneys. You know, I hear the you know, I, I hear I'm an attorney and I hear uh, a lot of life insurance guys I know tell me they're they're afraid when the lawyer shows up because they're afraid the lawyer is going to kill their deal. And so much that, I, you know, that the, the term uh, deal killer attorney is almost like a term, <laughs> they use, you know, and so yeah. I'm, I'm wondering what your relationship is like with the attorneys that you that are colleagues that you work with. Okay, for me, I, me personally, I haven't worked personally beside an uh, actual attorney, um, but one of my colleagues, uh, which is my business partner, he partnered with the, uh, a family attorney. And so, and they collided, they collaborated on a couple of events on how life insurance mm -hmm. can benefit uh, the family that he was serving. So from, he's a family attorney, so he deals with um, the aspect of divorce and and you know yeah. that's such nature so um and he just say uh, how beneficial life insurance can actually be towards their family um because uh, life insurance plays a, a a very important role even dealing with divorce and so you know because you know when you deal with life but I guess with a divorce you they trying to split everything up the middle or, or however they do it but i'm not for sure like i say i haven't personally um worked with one but my, my uh my colleague just shared stories with me on how life insurance can be very beneficial uh, dealing with attorneys. Now, I'm, me, myself, personally, I'm trying to actually connect with a lot of CPAs. Um, and so this, 
that's one of the things I try to reach out to and show them how life insurance can benefit their client as well. Or as, you know, when they're thinking about saving or even the tax purpose, the tax advantages um, that they can benefit from having through life insurance. And so that's one of the things that I'm really trying to tap into with, you know, working with CPAs or even attorneys as well. You know, um, I love to offer my service because uh, most of my service I do is complimentary and I try to figure out any way possible how I can assist them through what I specialize in. So I'm curious, have you, have you, have you uh, had the occasion to deliver a death benefit check yet? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I only have one. And uh, the crazy part about that is it was someone that I knew personally, family, you know. And so that's what, um, actually, it was my, my, my wife's nephew. So how this came about was I serviced her, I, I provided her a policy. Um, you know, I always share this story when I'm talking, actually, when I'm educating, just to let people know the, you know, the realization that anything can happen. So I serviced her with the policy. Um, seven months later, she gave me a call. Um, and asked me if everything okay with our policy. And I'm like, of course, I know everything is good because I've never received no information in regards to your policy. And so she just wanted to find out and it was kind of odd. So I asked her, everything's okay. Then she called me back and told me, you know, everything, she, she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And so I was like, wow. Okay, so I said, okay, cool. So what I did was I put in for an accelerated benefit for, because she had a terminal illness. So by, by, by time um, I got the paperwork in, uh, she ended up passing within, within two weeks. And so it was, it was, it was crazy uh, for me because that was my first one. And so. Uh, Donald, I think your sound cut out. There we go. We had to end up and file for a death benefit. And so, um, you know, Months later, I was able to deliver a check to her son and her daughter, uh, which yeah. is my wife's cousin. Yeah. You know, my colleagues who are, who are in the life insurance business tell me they've never delivered a death benefit check and had people complain about having too much death benefit. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. You might not get that, um, but it does help uh, with the breathing, you know, I would say it would help with the breathing. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, so uh, Donald with the, oh, go ahead. No, I was just remembering uh, a small conversation I had with the mom and she said she just wanted to have something uh, left behind for her kids, her two kids. You know, it wasn't a big claim, but it was something to uh, leave behind for the kids, you know. Um, so, you know, I shared that with, the, with our son later, uh, but he was like, wow, yeah. But go ahead. Sorry about that, Katie. No, that's great. I, I love it. I, I love um, taking what you do be just beyond the financial and, and monetary benefit. And I love these personal stories about how it truly has come through and, and help these families, even, you know, with a death benefit policy, these families that are grieving, um, those, yeah. those people, you know, that's that legacy that the mom was able to leave that, you know, she was able to leave them with something that they can, can use to make a positive impact on their family and on their lives and on the next generation. And I just think that that is extremely powerful. So I, I love that you shared that with us. And my, my next question for you actually relates to that. So through the education that you do and um, through all of the work that you do, what is it that you hope that your legacy will be, Donald? For my legacy to be educated on financial literacy, because uh, that's, that's one of the things that was really lacking in my family growing up. And so I didn't have that. Um, that importance or that education about financial literacy or how to even create generational wealth. You know, I didn't think it was possible because I wasn't taught that. So like my mom, my grandma, and my auntie, these are uh, three of the most important women in my life. They end up passing away without life insurance. And so I personally dealt with that and I understood it. Well, I didn't understand it then, uh, but now I understand it how important it is just to even have a simple term policy in place, you know? Uh, and so it was, I'm definitely wanted to leave a legacy with my 
my six boys to let them know that, you know, um, the importance of financial literacy. And just, just based off what I do and what I specialize in, I educate them in on how to create generational wealth through life insurance. And so that's, a, that's one of the, I ain't gonna say easiest tools to generate wealth, but it is pretty much is to have something in place that you have access to if God forbid something happens. And also you can generate, you know, generate revenue or generate wealth through life insurance if you structure it right. So definitely wanted to leave a legacy on financial living. I love that. And on your website, when I was reading through, it even said that your goal was to make sure that everyone understood that financial literacy is for everyone. Everyone deserves that. And, you know, not everyone gets that growing up and um, not all parents are, are financially literate themselves and can, can teach those things to their kids. And so I love that you are out there and really giving a voice to this and legs to this and, and teaching everyone that they can be financially literate and how some, some very simple tools exist to help them do that. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Is there anything we didn't cover today or Stan, do you have any, any other questions for Donald? No, I'm just, I was just sitting here thinking about uh, what, what a fun time, <clears throat> what a fun time holidays must be with, with nine uh, kids. Yes. Uh, man, we'd be here for hours. Man. <laughs> but the way, the thing I love about my kids, man, they keep me uh, energized, motivated, uh, it's never a, a dull or boring moment in my household. So, and it's pretty cool. So I have three biological daughters, two married, one is in college. She goes, she's in Grambling State University, my youngest daughter. And then my three boys, all, I had adopted six boys. So all my boys are adopted. Wow. And so I, I've been, I have a senior, a junior and a freshman. Uh, these three I had got when they was babies. Um, the senior, he was two weeks old when I got him. Uh, the junior, he was six months old. And then the freshman, uh, which is the junior and the freshman, they both are biological brothers. Uh, the freshman, I went to the hospital and got him right after she had him. Wow. <laughs> and so that is uh, the last, really cool. The last, the last three was my cousin kids. And so we, she ended up losing them in the system. So me and my wife decided to go ahead and take them in and adopt them. Oh, you got muted again, Donald. We lost you. Oh, okay. Well, oh, and he's back. Hey, welcome back, Donald. No, no problem at all. No problem at all. Well, I think that's family. We, uh, I think that's incredible. And what a powerful legacy you're leaving, not only in the, the business and financial world, but also what an incredible family legacy you've created um, with your biological kids and your adopted children and then, you know, bringing in your your nieces and nephews. And um, I think that is just such a such an incredibly such an incredibly strong and powerful um, thing that you can do for them and beyond that to not only give them this incredible home uh, to grow up with. And if your your wife is half as incredible as you, I'm sure you were wonderful parents for these kids. But beyond that, to be able to take all of the information that you learned later in life and teach that to a whole new generation. I, I think that is incredible. And I think you will see the ripple effect of that for years and years to come. So I salute you for all that you do with, with your kids. I think that is incredible. Uh, well, thank, thank you. you so much for being on the show with us, no ladies and gentlemen. This me. this has been the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast with your hosts Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand, and our guest today is Donald Cunningham. You can find out more about Donald and the services he provides. We will link his website dscfinancialservices.com in the show notes. Donald, thank you again so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Your Life, Your Legacy podcast with Stan Miller and Katie Beth Hand. If you enjoyed the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. To find out more about Stan and Katie Beth, go to PinnacleLegacyLaw.com. You can also find links in the show notes.